when we did the June reviews, we never talked about how funny the the name Bene Gesserit is. <laughs> like, it doesn't sound. It sounds like a Python, a Monty Python joke. Like, and I'm the seventh priest of the Bene Gesserit. We're the sisters of the, the Bene Gesserit. Oh, yes, the sisters of the Bene Gesserit. Come, Come in, in. <laughs> sit down, yes. Sort of like shadowy, truthful I people. I am but the Duke of the House of Trade. <laughs> it sounds like they're making it up as they go along. Yeah, but you've got like Harkonnen, Baron. And you, what is your name? Uh, uh, Paul. <laughs> I, I am Paul. And this is my sister from the Ben and Gesserit. <laughs> yes, I'll speak in my deep voice when I mean business. The voice, that's a good power to yeah. have, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Silence. Silence. Yeah. When, would you, when would you use it? I would use it to, life. I think, to get rid of cues. <laughs> like, yeah. Or if someone jumps in front of you at the queue. Oh yeah, I was here. You know me, James. I'd actually probably be to do it if someone goes to like take the tea bag out of the tea too yeah. soon. Like, Leave it in. <laughs> Let it brew. Let it brew. Yeah. Uh, what a yeah. waste of power it would be on me, yeah. indeed. Yeah. What about you? I'd probably just use it at home when I want something. <laughs> uh, Coffee. <laughs> June. Every, it's June crazy. Do Dune, mania. Still, still running, mania, still running. Insane. Sand, yeah, sand huge. on the dune. Lots of glowing reviews. Lots of glowing reviews. If you haven't listened to our June oh, coverage, yeah. lots of coverage. It's June week. We had the June review in episode 117. We had the June spoiler if you've review. Now seen June and you want to get some plot details? Please get we did a whole extra takes and, yeah. and things we liked, things that we didn't like in that little spoiler cast. So go and check that out if you haven't some already. Stuff on socials. I also yeah. in my, in the episode 117 we did include a recap of Dune Part One as well. If you haven't seen that, I realised also hearing it back that I really should have done that as Rory Stewart. You know how Rory on the rest is politics. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. Rory Stewart does the explainers about. Imagine if the Imperium yeah, yeah. had their own. You know liberal intelligentsia who listened to the rest on, is politics. And so on Arrakis, you have the Fremen, and the Fremen harvest uh, spice. It's a really important resource, but you know, me and Tony, <laughs> we Tony, really, yeah. really knew that. We made that clear. And uh, Shoshana and I, we we walked uh, through the south, which many people you, know. You travelled uh, to Arrakis, yeah, because yeah, you travelled to Arrakis, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And many people know the south of Arrakis is uninhabitable. It's completely uninhabitable. And the yeah. capital is Arrakeen. Now, the 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 I actually used to tutor. Yeah, Paul. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tutor for the trainees. Tutor for the trainees. He was a, a bright child, but incredibly uh, precocious. <laughs> yeah. Um, his mother Idaho. constantly uh, interfering, saying he was the one, and I, you know, I was teaching him Latin. I could, <laughs> I just would have liked that, I'd like this little explainer, because he does it so well for other yeah, things. But he should do it for actually explaining some, con movies. some conflict in Libya. Yeah. That's been going so um, the Harkonnens really have important. run rackets for eighty years. Um, the slight list, M much to the and dismay spice. of <laughs> and spice, it's kind of a <laughs> petrochemical. <laughs> And it has some hallucinogenic qualities too, so, doesn't it? Yeah, they got these extraordinary. No, that's what we would say. Here we go. Yeah, it's it's extraordinary. The, the Fremen have these beautiful blue eyes <laughs> that just stand out. My Alistair Campbell really comes from my core. Oh, yeah. I really kind of sort of get it. Do you think it's sort of whispery? Yeah, a little bit whispery. I think as he's getting older, he'll be sort of. Yeah, we, he does talk through his lips and his yeah. his mouth. We could never goes. work with the Fremen. Could you yeah. remember? Well, the Fremen, you know, they wear still suits. They're in the sieges. <laughs> You have to go to the Seaches yeah. to... That, again, they if I do it do too it. long, I go Blair. They should have been we paid by... go to like the a, Seaches. Yeah, they should have been uh, paid by the team to do like a political explainer. That's yes, such they, an obvious brand. Yeah, yeah. Like for people who've never oh seen God. June. I'm like writing the own ad copy for whoever's the on the... Uh, politics X yeah. June part two. You get like the archives of whatever uh, Frank Herbert wrote. You just, you just get them to... Well, you know, it's yeah. really... At later Dune Messiah yeah. and the Children of Dune. Uh, and you do an entire leading episode with the Baron. <laughs> 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 Just in his oil bar. Well, I wanted to take a ragus. <laughs> but, but, you know, many people have said you're a, a, a savage, a monster. It and was an insurrection, yeah, wasn't it? You slaughtered the House of Atreides. We Dave never touched the Atreides. Yeah. There's one with Dave Batista and he's just screaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How could you give it to them? Yeah. That dude. Hey, mama, I'm yeah. here to get a rackus back. I'm going to slit your throat and flatten the gladiator arena. <laughs> oh, God bless Austin Butler I'm... and his Elvis voice. Uh, I hope I hope in his next batch of projects. Bike riders, he's still going to sound like Elvis. Because he's going to sound a bit like uh, a cowboy. The thing is, he doesn't, he doesn't sound Elvis in the sense he hasn't got the southern accent. So he's not down there doing all that. But he's he's got the kind of more sincere... Um, I've seen him in Junkies. He's like, oh, whispering. yeah, I've heard of that. 
In rainbows by radio. Yeah, he's not. You, he's he's talking oh. out of his throat. The back he's of talking his throat. from his soul, isn't he? Yeah. Really, you know. And he is cool. He's a good looking guy. He is a good looking guy. He's, he's got good. great. Whoever does the product in his hair needs a raise. It's always just like a disheveled elegance. I describe oh. it as. It's it's pitch perfect. And I think like sometimes Chalamet sat next to him, being like. I used to be the coolest movie yeah, star. Yeah, you know, I did. Yeah. Bones and all. And oh, now yeah. you're the coolest movie I star. I think man. Um, Chalamet needs to uh, back off for a bit. I, I love f- him. Back off. Uh, he, he's, he's got. He's having <laughs> he's a, a bit of a Jennifer Lawrence in 2015, oh, over, 16 mode. So she had like two franchises with the X-Men and with Hunger Games that was sort of coming out. And she had a, she had a lot of Oscar films, Passengers. She was just a little bit everywhere. And I think she benefited. She did mother. She needed to sort of benefit from a bit of a rest. So maybe in the time between now and the next June, he needs to go Messiah, go yeah. quiet and yeah. then maybe maybe do a TV series. Because he's putting out like, he's in three films a year. He's always on the cycle of... Yeah. He's always at a premiere wearing not enough clothes. Yeah. Looking like underdressed. Do you remember she, the Wonka one? The Wonka one was like zero degrees. It's quite hot. Like Barry Keown loves to get his arms out. You do the arms. Barry, Barry Flare Keown, trousers. I don't know what's... He's just dressed in whatever he likes. I think he always will. He's a little... Yeah. A little bit, oh yeah, I'll put that outfit yeah. on. I don't, sure. <laughs> it's just always... <laughs> with, um, I listen to a podcast with the two actors that do it. And they're like, Barry Keown's great, but... He's doing the same thing and everything. <laughs> they sort of called him out for being the same thing and everything. Oh, which really? I don't think it's fair. No, I think I think I think it's a bit harsh. Yeah, I think he 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 is a type, but you know he's he's doing his thing. Um, He'll make a good Joker. Yeah, talking about actors, then you just threw. Who am I going to separately? Any yeah. Um, they're starting to uh, throw out cast members for the season two of Last of Us Part of the Last or Last of Us Part Two, which I know you haven't played, but they've cast. Um, the one from Caitlin Dever, Caitlin Dever as Great Abby, intro. which is which Great is interesting because she was uh, she plays in Uncharted Four, which is the same developer that made The Last of Us and Uncharted, Naughty Dog. She plays Nathan Drake's daughter right. in one scene, so she's clearly like through osmosis of being in that, which is yeah. made in the same building, has got been cast as Abby in Last of Us Part Two. And I wonder if they'll because you know Jeffrey Wright's in Last of Us Part Two. Brilliant. I, I really hope they give him the role if he wants to do it, and he's back as. He's doing the most Jeffrey Wright, Jeffrey Wright in The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, in what, in what, wait, in what, uh, he's like a wait, of, wait, oh, wait. Was Jeffrey Wright in The Last of Us Game Part Two? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I, he's I in know, The Last of Us Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's in it, and you're like, damn, that's Jeff- it's unmistakably Jeffrey Wright. Yeah. But I hope they give it to him. Yeah, because he's great, and I'm sure he had a good time doing the game. My goodness. Yeah. My goodness. I'm sorry. I'm still thinking about how overexposed Chalamet is and what, <laughs> what he can do in his sort of retirement. Yeah, he is time. a bit now. I, I would say go away. And it's not because I don't like what Rest. he's done. I think he's great. It oh, is, withhold yourself. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, do you know who does have a face for the Dune saga and really who's not be currently in it? in it? Yes. Go on. But won't be, can't necessarily be in it because he's been in something too close to it. Sure. It's Adam Driver. Oh, yeah, so he's so Dune ready. Such a Dune face. So Dune ready. More a face for Dune than he does for Star Wars. As a Harkonnen? No, because I, I can't imagine. I can't imagine Adam Driver bald. It's oh, really God. strange. I think he he he, Does could, that not happen he yet? could be an older uh, Paul Atreides. Perhaps. Yeah. Oh my God, an aged Atreides. An aged Atreides. Yes, yes. Aged Atreides. Aged Atreides. Um, or some sort of, or uh, you know, he could. Be, I see him as an Atreides person, a, a humanoid. I'm going to take back this land. Yeah. Whoa. Watch out. I, I watched the scene when um, Adam yeah. Driver, well, when Ben Solo does the thing to Han Solo in The Force yeah. Awakens. And I, 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 I have the voice. I know what I have to do, but mm. I don't know if I have the strength to do it. What did you think about Christopher Walken in June, by the way? We didn't talk about that. I think I, I liked him. I like because I look at him, I'm like, he's like a relic of his cinema. Like, he's I still never around. reject him now. He, he he's, he's, he's he's sort of, you know, the spice. It's send some sauce. Yeah. He, he didn't he didn't ham it up as, no. as Walken. He's actually just quite, quite well behaved. He wasn't, uh, if you'll pardon the expression, a Walken meme. Yeah, yeah, like a walking yeah, yeah. meme. He they just... must be aware of that. Denis must be like, yeah. Christopher, I love you at dawn, just... Oh, just a little less. Anyway, lots of June talk as ever, but another week's gone by and mm. um, we're talking about other films this week. So, you know, June's come out and it's basically taken every single cinema yes. slot. Yeah. So the film we're going to review today is something that James been, has been able to go Perfect and Perfect Days. By Vim Vendors. Yes, um, uh, with a Viva. Yeah, Viva. He's, he's German. He's German. Yeah, yes. Vim. Yeah. Very stylish man as well. Have you ever seen I, him? I think I've seen a picture, yeah. Um, but, but, you know, that's the kind of movies that we're reviewing at the moment because June is taking up all the major slots. So yeah. you, you get the kind of counter-programming. But nonetheless, I was really glad I saw yes, Perfect Days absolutely. as counter-programming. So if you want a nice, almost, um, uh, did you Steve to June? Something to yeah. just offset, palate cleanser. I'll get onto this, but Perfect Days functionally as a film is a marvelous palate cleanser for the chaotic, urban, sprawling mm. madness of life. Wow. I'll get onto it in my review coming um, up. Please continue to send your reviews of Dune Part 2 in. We are collating them. We're a little bit, we're recording this. By the time you listen to this, 
uh, like another 10, 10 days would have gone past. So if you've sent in correspondence and we haven't read yeah. it out, it's we're not recording these in the future, so you always have an episode. But uh, uh, nonetheless, yes. the show goes on. So um, as ever, let's do a film review and proceed with the show. Aren't we peaceful? Aren't we sort of? And there is the episode. We don't want to give anyone any surprises. No. no. Hello. Yeah. And you're listening to Pulp Kitchen. Dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. I never got enough respect for putting Jingle Bells perfectly in time with the Christmas episode this year. I don't get enough respect <laughs> yeah. for what I do. I had to find. I thought you could just add Jingle Bells to any song. No, you can't. You have to find GPL G, uh, Jingle Bells at the exact BPM of yeah. the track. So to find out the, the BPM of our track, then go to a Jingle Bells song generator, type in the BPM. Yeah. Uh, it was actually quite an involved- it was. It was, I felt like Mark Ronson. <laughs> it was two and a half months ago. <laughs> <laughs> I just I was really happy with it and anyway people um, commented. Episode 119. Let's go. So perfect days. I will say it was not a perfect day when I went to go and see it. I live uh, sort of near Camden and I went to Camden a lovely Camden Curzon cinema to go and watch the film. There's sort of lovely screenings under the arches. And it was a little bit sunny on a Sunday, and therefore Camden was just heaving, yep. sprawling, tourists, food, noodles, that just Doc Martens. I hate it. I hate, I hate people. It was busy. Yep. But anyway, I then sort of go into this beautifully soundproof, mm. perfect dark, perfect day screening. A very full screening, actually, considering that it's it's out when June is out. But lots of sort of very sort of um, serious people. Serious, serious film people. With their movie tote bags. Uh, it's sort of. Two to three hundred pound glasses mm. and and the yeah, tote bags. severe fringes. Yes, severe, yeah, an intense frown on yes. the brow. And there was me, with a little cold brew, <laughs> watching Perfect Days, directed by Vim Vendors, who's actually in his late seventies. Mm. I've not seen any of his other films. Uh, it gives us a Japanese language film set in the Shibuya district of Tokyo. And we, this film's all about Koji Yakusho, who plays Hirayama, an older Tokyo resident who cleans public toilets. And the very first. 30 minute sequence of the film. I'd say this film takes place over the course of a week and we are treated to the days of his life as they, as they go. We sort of get this opening 30 minute sequence. I'd say the first 15 to 20 minutes is almost dialogue free. And we encounter this man go through the entirety of his day. He wakes up, makes his bed very meticulously, sprays his plants that he collects from various parts around the city, meticulously cleans his teeth, fetches his keys, he comes outside, he has his overalls on, and on the back it says um, Tokyo, Tokyo cleaning. Uh, he looks up at the weather and is sort of engaging with whether it's a sunny day or if it's a rainy day. He gets the same coffee from a vending machine outside his home, and it's like a canned coffee vending machine. Mm. He sits in his van, has everything he needs to do his job, and he, every single day, chooses a cassette playing music from the 70s and 80s rock, rock bands. You've got House of the Rising Sun, mm. Pale Blue Eyes by Velvet Underground, Sunny Afternoon from the Kinks. And the cassette thing is um, less like a preservation of old hipster media. It was much more of a... I know where this piece of analog physical media goes and it fits in this box and I know where to place it and I will play this one today and I will choose. It. And then in his house, there's actually like books and cassettes and all of this analog media that's sort of very carefully organized. Um, and he has this big, huge carabiner clip of all of these different shaped keys, which are all the keys of all the places he's going to visit and he's going to clean in the toilets. And he drives as the sun rises in Tokyo along the spiraling highway. And the only Tokyo we see really are the highways between the very immaculate public toilets in Tokyo that he goes to clean. He's very diligent, he has a mirror and he looks underneath the toilet bowl and behind the seats and makes sure everything's clean. And at lunch he goes and sits near the temple and he has a lunch and he encounters mostly the same people every single day. He has a little film camera and he takes pictures of the same tree and the same leaves and the same shadows. At the end of his day, he goes to a communal washroom and in particular, he cleans himself down. Um, he goes to the shop, he gets his photography de developed, he get, buys a new reel of film, takes his overalls, gets it cleaned. And there's sort of this idea that I think in Hollywood, we'd be quite well conditioned to look at a character who cleans toilets for a living and for us to engage with that in a sort of overly politicized, sympathetic fashion. Mm. But I think the, what I soon realized is that that's not what this film is trying to achieve. And actually, the fact that he cleans toilets for a living is much more of a happenstance. And it's much more about someone who is trying to... There's a sort of solace 
in the city. And being of the occupation that a toilet cleaner gives you, it means that probably other people aren't going to bother you. And there's mm. a comfort in the repetition and the decisiveness about mm. everything he does. It never portrays him as someone who's not capable of doing something else or someone who's stupid. He reads constantly at night and he's very cultured and engages with music. And there's sort of this idea that the fact that he cleans toilets is neither here nor there. You just happen to be following this man and engaging with the city as he is cleaning toilets. The days are bookended by these black and white dream sequences that are entirely abstract but contain these flashes of memorable moments of his day. Um, and there's little moments that happen that sort of gets you an understanding of who this man is. Um, there's this one time he's cleaning one of the toilets he regu regularly cleans and down the side of the paneling of the cupboard is this folded up piece of paper. And at first he grabs the paper to just throw it in the bin and then he opens it and realizes it's the structure of a noughts and crosses grid with one of the holes filled in. And instead of throwing it away, he decides to fill in the next hole, fold the paper back up again and put it in. Mm. And over the following days, he's playing noughts and crosses with somebody else who's also left yeah. that paper and playing. Um, there's also a moment where his niece comes to stay with him and... Uh, and sort of in another film, that would be the sort of interrupting factor of his life that chose cho yeah. him to reframe and he's confronted with... But I can't have that, a niece. But yeah. I can't have a niece. You interrupted my thing. But there's actually not what this film is is about. Um, I don't know if any other people really like on TikTok and social media the sort of uh, Sunday reset core films yeah. where it's like, come with me as I like, do the cushions, wipe down the surfaces. Yeah. And so he obviously is functionally cleaning his uh, cleaning toilets, but everything is very meticulous about his space and where it goes. And I must say, especially in the first 30, 45 minutes, I really enjoyed being in the presence of this mm. character and being in the presence of this film. It's beautifully shot and there's something really... Um, engaging and uh, uh, enticing about this man's actions. Um, I think that it's, it's two hours long and I feel like it could have benefited from a key change. I think you, you live out seven, eight days of this guy's life. And I think at the end of it, after two hours, I can't help but think it was maybe, maybe a little bit too subdued, maybe a bit too minimalist. Mm. Maybe I needed... Um, I will say, if you have a lot of chaos and noise in your life, you will definitely find the company of this film very relaxing, reassuring, and soothing for the soul. Um, but it is, it is very interesting. It is very good. A little bit too long. Um, and the less I try to make sense of what I was seeing politically mm. and the more what I was engaging with as a piece of art and a, and a sort of very brief understanding over why this man does what he does. Mm. Is it because he's trying to find anonymity in a city? That to me lies in the interesting question uh, for Perfect Days. But mm. a, a very sort of quiet and contemplative film that I'm very glad I saw actually because I think if we weren't pushing each other to see films every week, given that June's just out, I probably would have missed it. Mm. And I'm glad I saw it. Oh, brilliant. Okay, I, I, um, I've not seen any of Invenders, but I, I, Paris, Texas is like a big film that sits on yeah. my list and it's like three hours long and it's very slow, but everyone says it's very beautiful and it's like there's something mm. I need to do. Uh, I do. I've also wanted to see Wings of Desire for ages, but he is one of those kind of directors that's just a blind spot for me. Yeah. So uh, maybe this is a good way in actually. Yeah, this, uh, it sort of like becomes, in so many other films would not get away with the repetitive mm. monotony of this film, but... Um, it gets away with it. And even moments when he is confronted by the external forces, mm. um, it doesn't define his journey in the film. It's more mm. of a little indication for you to make up your mm. own your own mind. Like, there's loads of like little moments. I didn't go through the whole day where he he goes to this, like often he has like two or three places where he goes for noodles to have dinner and the people who are there know him and mm. what, uh, they, don't, they don't not speak to him, but they sort of know his order and there's this wonderful familiarity in someone who goes about and does what they do. Mm. It's sort of almost like a respect for that discipline mm. um i've never really seen a film like it i'd say mm. but i definitely enjoyed my time with it it sounds a bit like um jim jarmusch made a film called patterson about oh it's uh, adam, driver. adam driver yeah. i don't think i saw it yeah uh, it's very similar like adam driver plays a bus driver mm. um called patterson in a town called patterson um and again it's the same thing every day he gets up he drives his drives his bus yeah he sits in the same spot to have his lunch he has the same thing for, for lunch yeah he writes poetry he then goes to the same bar every night he walks the dog and it's kind of yeah. this repetition thing and it does sound almost like a good parallel there yeah there's uh, this wonderful like idea as well of like capturing media and storing it mm -hmm. and you're watching a film and he, when his niece comes she's like he, he's playing all this amazing music for her and she's borrowing the tapes and She's like, oh, I have that on Spotify. And he's like, is that a website? He doesn't really know. But there's this idea of like having, being able to tangibly gift someone something and yeah. the 
this yeah. film also being a piece of media that's there to sit and be placed somewhere. Mm. The idea of like nooks and crannies and things existing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's enjoyable. Like why, why he captures the same thing over and over again, what he's looking for. And yeah. it does, do you need to be looking for something? If you just find a tree particularly mm. captivating, what's wrong with taking a picture of it every day and putting those photos in a box? Because they make you happy. I feel like it sounds like the kind of perfect, like, like we said earlier, perfect balm after oh, Dune. Yeah. Dune's yeah, yeah. big, loud, and long. And yeah. th this is like, hey, and now perfect days. It's definitely about finding the appreciation in the small things mm, in life like and not that. trying to find a grand understanding for, mm. for what you do. Um, there's, still, there's still a lot that I haven't said about the film. But um, yeah, you do. I think you live eight mm. days of his life. And like the first day is about 30 minutes and then the sort of like 15 to 20 minutes for the, for the following days. Mm. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting and soothing. Well, if you've seen Perfect Days uh, by Vin Vendors and would like to email in your thoughts, please do, as ever, write in to hello at popkitchenpodcast.com. It actually made me really want to um, get into printing photos and storing mm. photo books and like the kind of... Um, tangible yeah. physicality that that gives of just knowing that the photos are there and they might not mean much to you the week after you printed them but in 10 years that's like you're so glad to have that in mm. a physical place you could physically give it and physically look yeah yeah that's it it's, just, it's more of a feeling mm. get a Ooh, feeling about like that, that film but if you if you are overwhelmed and scattered and plead like ah oh, this is this is the film for you those of you who like to see people wipe down their home and light mm. a scented candle but it's like a Japanese version of that, which is even more. Yeah, and it's two hours long. And it's two hours long. Not two minutes. Yeah, it's two hours long. That was perfect days. Perfect days. George, should we go through some of the emails that we get sent every single week to hello at popkitchenpodcast.com, just like McLovin did. I have a feeling... Eric. His name's Eric, but it's there's a McLovin in the in the. Yeah, Eric, email. your name's Eric from Norway, but you've written in... As McLovin. Uh, Eric McLovin. Eric I'm McLovin. McLovin Eric with a picture of Andrew Garfield as your picture. But anyway. Hello from Norway. I'm a long time listener, but this is only the second time I've sent an email to the show, a friend of the show. George. Welcome. Welcome. I absolutely love your show. and It's been giving me great comfort during a difficult time I've been going through lately. Hmm. June oh, sorry, to two thoughts. Here we go. On a more positive note, I just recently went with a friend to watch a double feature of June part one and mm. two in IMAX. That's great. Congrats. That's brilliant. Yeah. Ears must be ringing. Yeah, long day. Out. Yeah. I'm one of those who loved part one so much that I'd seen it four times before part two came out. Wow. I adored the world and character so much that I read the book not long after watching part one. It might go without saying, but I was extremely excited for part two, and I'm happy to say I think it delivered on everything. Denis has truly outdone himself here. The way he tackles and somehow contains this absolute behemoth of a story into a cohesive experience is nothing short of amazing. Mm. There are no words to describe just how technically impressive June part two is. Greg Fraser has crafted some of the most stunning, epic, and jaw-dropping visuals I've ever had the pleasure of seeing mm. on the big screen. Yeah, we complimented it in our in our reviews if you haven't listened to them. Hands of Miss School will play in my head anytime I see a still or read anything about June. The editors and VFX artists are some of the highest quality you could imagine, and the actors, in all caps, bring it. Mm, it's do. always exciting when you can tell how much the actors are into and enjoying their roles. Mm, yeah, that is true. Yeah. You, can tell they're having, you can tell they're enjoying it. Yeah. Like they, 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 they feel the, the weight and the word. Oppenheimer, thing. you felt that. Yeah. In Killers of the Flower Moon. Anything Scorsese. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back to Eric. Says, but it's Sorry, actually on that, by the way. I said about June that it seems to be that if you have a movie that's near three hours long these days, it has yeah. to have an orange poster. Yeah, yeah. June part two, Oppenheimer, Killers of the Flower Moon. It's, it's like warning. orange on a poster, flags. It's going to... You, you, Settle you in. Hold in your bladder. Yeah. But it's important to give the film credit in other areas too, as I feel the general praise will be directed at the superb visual effects and action sequences. Dune Part 2 is not just a visual trick. The characters are handled with such care and attention to detail, there's a potential risk at stake for each of our main characters, resulting in an incredible tension being built as the film goes on and the characters face more danger. It's also a very complex deconstruction of the stereotypical hero. Mm. This is obviously credited to the great Frank Herbert, but it's beautifully realised in the films. One of the big criticisms I saw for Part 1 back when it released was, the surrounding, was surrounding the character of Paul Atreides, Many people found him stale and cliche, and I'm very excited to see how those people react to see where his character goes in part two. Mm. I'm more simplified. I like Dune a lot. Um, yeah, I saw a comment that Janine made yeah. about how he sort of never wanted Paul Atreides to be a sympathetic character, and that he's, there's something inherently well, he said that, tempestuous about him. He said that Frank Herbert was surprised that when he published Dune, yes. people said that Paul Atreides was a hero. And he was like, no, he's an anti-hero. There's a story he, that's coming, yeah, apparently. Yeah, so when he wrote Dune Messiah, it. he wanted to change that but now knowing that didn't even have wrote that into had the privilege June of Party. reading June exactly Messiah, and that's yeah. he said he slightly changed uh Chani's character yeah to reflect the anti-hero nature of paul it's nice to know that they're think thinking forward yeah for all of that um question 
Are there any films you love that are made by a big director, but for whatever reason isn't talked about much? I'm not referring to a movie you think is simply underrated, as that could be a very popular film that people just don't like much, but more if there are any hidden gems in these big directors' filmographies that most people might not have seen or even heard of. Small film from a big director. Small film from a big director, okay. yeah. Like a lot of people have been saying recently, in Incendie, from Denis Villeneuve, awesome, yeah, that's yeah, right, yeah, yeah, um, which we've not seen. Uh, and then he lists some of his favorites. He says uh, Francis Ford Coppola, Rumblefish from 1983, a true oh. hidden gem, might be my favorite film made by Coppola. Uh, Martin Scorsese, Bringing Out the Dead from 99, yeah. a Thrilling Fever Dream, Steven Spielberg's Jewel from 71, mm-hmm. a simple but very intense road rage thriller. Uh, Wong Kar Wai, Happy Together uh, from 97, Melancholy at its finest. Michael Mann's Thief from 81, coolest movie ever? Question mark. Yeah, okay. And these are only a handful. I realize that some of these were made before the directors were big, but I still don't think they have the attention they deserve. Thank you for the great content. You have a really positive effect on your listeners. Love from Norway, Eric. Thank you, Eric. Um, small films from big directors. Small films. I'd say like not the hugest director, but an under film scene that's my favorite is Shame from Steve McQueen. Because everyone knows Twelve Years a Slave, and I'm like, oh, you should go check yeah. out Shame. It's really good. But it's like he's not like a huge director. I'd say even though he did win Best Picture. I'm trying to think of who's like one of, who's a big name that comes out with with films that you think, mm. oh, well, have you ever seen there? Well, no one's seen like. Um, Insomnia from Christopher Nolan. Or like, yeah, well, not um, in a while. Yeah, I, no. I do actually really want to watch it. Yeah, but I think it's just because it. it's like the most Following. least Nolan Nolan film. Yeah, um, like actually, Richard Linklater's made like he's made big films like School of Rock. Yeah, and like obviously the Befores and the Boyhoods are, are big, but like he's made small films. That I don't, I don't know. I've seen the smaller ones mm. though. Like, I don't know because I haven't seen, <laughs> yeah, them. I haven't seen them. Yeah, it's a head scratcher. We'll think about it. Yeah, thank you, Eric. This next email is from Joseph. Joseph writes in with a, an email headline that says, Straight out of theatre, June part two. Good day, George and James. James and George, taking James's philosophy of closed vowel to open vowel sound, then open vowel to closed vowel sound. Yeah. Sure. J-jaw. J-jaw. But he did... J-jaw. S- sure. Whereas if you go George J... George A. J-jaw. Okay. I'm an 18-year-old from Hobart, Tasmania, which is the bottom island of Australia, and have always loved film. The Australians... I've been emailing in. Yeah, the, we've you, had you a lot to, of, and, from, the and, Kiwis. and the Kiwis as yeah. well. You I, guys I, are really showing really love appreciate from it. As, as far away as you can from be. From the Antipodes, as they used Thank to say. Um, Australasia. Australasia. Um, and I've always loved film, says Joseph. I found you guys after swimming to the depths of the ocean, only to find a long lost treasure chest mm. that inside had the words Pulp Kitchen inscribed on an ancient artifact. Just kidding, I found you on TikTok. Nice. After this monumental discovery, I binged your episodes on YouTube in an attempt to get caught up. Thankfully, I caught up right before the New Year celebrations. Again, great nice. work on your part. To this main point, I just walked out of watching what might have been one of the best films made this century, Dune Part 2. Of the century. Colossal, breathtaking, and essential overload, this piece of art had me hooked from beginning to end. Hans Zimmer's score, which will in fact be in, on repeat until part three. Greg Fraser's perfect cinematography. Every single member of the cast giving 200%. And of course, Denis Villeneuve's exceptional vision has made this film one I will not forget for as long as I breathe. My favorite moments include, um, yep, Fade Rotha, he's great. I'm going to just paraphrasing over this in case there's any spoilers. Um, Rebecca Ferguson, yep, great. And the scene with, hmm, uh-huh, uh-huh. yeah, that is also good. Yeah. Thoughts? <laughs> I will also just ask two quick questions, but I understand if there's not enough time to answer. No, it's okay. Chuck them in. Ever since I was a kid, I've always loved buying DVDs, as my dad has quite a handful of them, which has now led me to, to continue to buying them, especially Blu-rays. Um, I also have a lot of movie posters around my room, as I used to purchase a lot of Empire magazine, which came with double-sided posters. Oh, I love that. Do you remember when you used to buy yeah. like a magazine and it'd come with a free oh, poster? The best. Um, my questions are, did either of you have posters in your room as a kid? And did you have, have a lot of DVDs when you were younger? Do you have a lot now? Do you think physical media is going to die out very soon? I think it's about four questions in there. Thanks for entertaining us with your quick wit, valuable, op- valuable opinions, sharp, all caps, German dress, that. valuable opinions, valuable opinions, sharp dress sense, Thank and you. spot on impressions. Sirens on our end, Joe. So Joe has- Film posters. Film posters in your room. I had uh, two Daniel Craig James Bond posters. Wow. I had Casino Royale, yeah. like an A2. And then I had Skyfall. Wow. And Very bond. Yeah, yeah. I really, I really was. Well, such a boy. I, th- I think I got gifted the Casino Royale one. Mm. And I liked that film. So I was happy to have it represent my personality. And then yeah. I loved Skyfall. Huh. And I, you know, when you're like, when you're 15 and you're yeah. an HMV, you just get a Skyfall yeah, 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 poster. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you do. And um, I, had, like, I had a Red Dead Redemption one, an Infamous 2 one, wow. an Uncharted 3 one, smaller. Wow. 
I can but... smell the can of links. Oh yeah, <laughs> in, yeah, in yeah, that yeah, room. Was, uh, and then I think the rest might have been football related, Arsenal yeah. related. So I don't think I actually ever had any specific movie posters. I had a lot of music ones. The only movie posters I had was I had a, a sort of cartoon looking version of Jules and Vince from Pulp Fiction in it. Yeah. I also had a poster that was on my wall for years, which was like uh, it was a sketch, basically like hand drawn thing that was a a thousand dollar bill and on it oh. it had actors from like it had like al pacino robert de niro cameron yeah. diaz brad pitt from all these different from films i hadn't even seen which but now i have i also had a keep calm and carry on poster which had loads of different variations but they're all film related yes i had that yeah, same poster yeah, 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 yeah. i had also a big one that said now panic and freak out oh really I'm so like I'm a team, oh, wow, you know? so yeah. but no other than that it was David Bowie posters, Beatles posters. Did you it. have a uni one? Did you have Apocalypse Now in, no, in your uni? No, in uni. What did, what did I have in my uni? Uh, no, I, I, I went to your year two house once. Yeah, I, yeah, I, was in, I, I had no Bowie. Hang on, I had Bowie, NASA. No, uh, yeah. I think I had a lot of like music and... Yeah, I don't As think a star, yeah. <laughs> Hey, he, he was, yeah, I had Bowie at home yeah. and Bowie at uni, yeah. It was, yeah. You know, he, oh, but, for ages, like, when I was much younger, I had Harry Potter, when the Philosopher's Stone came out, Harry Potter, Gryffindor, bedspreads. <laughs> I had... Um, oh, I, had uh, a really good, I had a really good sleeping bag, Harry Potter sleeping bag. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had um, episode one stickers on my wardrobes <laughs> for years. You know when you just, like, that's something that's just so part of the set dressing yeah. of your room, you don't even think about it. And then I got to like... I don't know when, but like the prequels had very much been and gone. <laughs> and I was just looking at like this sticker of Jar Jar Binks and like R2-D2 and like, you know, the episode one, the one that Anakin flies when he goes up to the Trade Federation. When yeah, he the Naboo fighter. The, yeah. Naboo, I had that like just stuck on my yeah. wardrobe. And one time I was like, this is a terrible film. <laughs> I love Star Wars. This is a terrible, I like Darth Sidious, like these little stickers. Like, I just ripped them off. They'd been on there for so many years oh, that no. there was the Jar Jar Binks outline <laughs> for such a long time. But um, yeah, they eventually, they eventually uh, went. But yeah, what I, I, that's a oh, that's a rite of passage having posters on your and wall. And DVDs, you have a little DVD collection. Oh, DVDs, George. I, I yeah. have, there's lots of DVDs back at my parents' house that I've sort of, helped get rid of them but now i'm like i i, I had the point of having them for too long needed to get rid of them yeah. started to get rid of them and now i'm like actually i probably hold on to them because i'm kind of missing physical media more and then i have a criterion collection as well and guess what james it sits on my shelf and i never bloody watch it yeah i at one point when i started identifying as a film fan started <laughs> to spend my pocket money on dvds but it's just they're quite expensive yeah. and then blu-rays came out and i was like well should i commit to blu-rays but by the time blu-rays came out like i didn't really have a blu-ray player and then digital starts happening and um there was this interesting uh, school of thought that before like we sort of go oh did, uh, physical media is dead but a lot of the people who are now old enough to buy physical media grew up in really cluttered chaotic houses yeah. where all our media had to be stored and it was like this sort of hoarded baggage where you look at old living rooms mm. and and family rooms from from the from the noughties and 90s and there's just media everywhere yeah. stacked boxes and vhs and i think like we get into our we grow up we become adults we want to actually have a very minimal space yeah, totally. without clutter because we grew up with it yeah so the actual the, the we embrace digital media for all its flaws because it's just clean minimal mm. you don't have to store anything and then when you move you have to take oh, all these boxes of media with you and then you can't even play a vhs anymore well. and like cds you know, can't really play cds anymore um but i'm not anti i'm not anti-physical media there's a lot of problems with that, especially recently um, didn't people lose access to a film? Yeah, yeah, there's been lots of people. Uh, Disney took uh, Disney stuff off of Disney yeah. Plus. I'm like, why? If you can't get that on Disney Plus, why? So for, for ages, like Sony PlayStation, you could buy films and TV shows on the PlayStation Store. Yeah. So like, you know, it's connected to your TV, makes sense. And I think they took away a bunch of stuff on the PlayStation Store. And it was like, if you didn't already own it, mm. you can't buy it. And it's like, if you bought the license, you don't have it anymore. That's ridiculous. Um, which is, you know, it's there. Anyway, um... Liam's name. Moving on to Liam, who writes in to hello at popkitchenpodcast.com with tiny font. I need to zoom in. Liam says, George and James. What is this, an email for ants? It's an email for ants in Garamond. <laughs> George and James, I'm Liam from Little New Zealand. How are you? Another, another fan from Ataroa. Ataroa, yeah, yeah. Have, do a meetup. Yeah. I, we won't come. We, I'd love to go to New Zealand. I'd love I'd, to. I, I'd have to have my expenses paid. If you let us know, yeah, <laughs> a brand would have to come in. And I'm not flying coach. I'm flying premium if I'm going that far. Yeah, we could do a little um, could do a little tour of Stone Street Studios. 
Is that where they shoot? Yeah. Uh, I've been to where, I've, told, I've been to where to workshop. Have I yeah, that? they're nice. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And I was the only person. No, no, no one else in my tour group wanted to go there. And I had a personalized walkthrough tour, and I saw the the, the the stuff they designed for the Halo movie that they never made. Yeah, I mean, it's I, know TV show I know now, it's a TV show. Yeah. I don't know if they've used that yeah. for that, but like, yeah. it was great. I saw yeah. them designing oh, stuff. I'd love to go. And I was like, so what can you tell me? about you're working on. They were like nothing. I can't I tell you about anything. Actually, can't tell you. Yeah, I'm not allowed to tell you this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Liam from Little New Zealand, Otoroa. I want to start by saying a big thank you for entertaining me while I drive five to seven hours a day. A day? I always picture people driving. I told you this. Yeah. People driving. New Zealand is big, but I mean, I work as, spread out places. I, I work as a production on. runner slash art department runner here on films in New Zealand. Oh, that's I cool. love that. That is really cool. What are you working on? Yeah. Tell us. Sirens on our end. Big sirens. Jesus. Liam, don't pull over. <laughs> yeah. um, here on New Zealand, your podcast helps me through the long shifts and countless traffic jams without proper entertainment can be so painful. You're very welcome. Uh, I wanted to email for two reasons. One, to give my thoughts on June part two, which was that it was a feat of visual storytelling like yes. no other. I feel like for a long time, we've only been getting spectacle theater experiences, but this finally felt like a spectacle and a story you can sink your teeth into. It was wildly refreshing. Curious to know what other films you think fit into this character category. Uh, before I do, there's, we've almost like people are commenting on how bombastic and overwhelming it is yeah. but as a compliment yes it's quite, it's quite hard to nail that of like this was frightening and overwhelming yes. and, and stimulating but exceptional yeah uh, uh any, any other films uh do you think fit into this ca category uh, a spectacle with a story you can sink your teeth into i'd say uh, interstellar yeah uh yeah. Like nolan's work yeah in particular uh, i'd say the same about like arrival yeah that's a good one yeah so if you haven't seen arrival Big. go and see arrival it's brilliant yeah. Uh, the second reason for this email is that next year in Feb, I'm moving to London, which is going to be a massive change and a fulfillment of a dream of mine to live in the cultural center point. I was lucky enough to be able to claim my British passport last week, brackets, my dad was born in the UK, and I was all starting to feel very real. I'd love some help from fellow film Londoners. I was curious if you could fill me in on what you know about the UK film industry and living in London itself, and possibly some noteworthy theaters to check out if there's time. Over and out from... 18,763 kilometers away. <laughs> Liam, your long-time listener and first-time emailer and a wave emoji with an Australian flag. Hello. No, with a New Zealand flag. With a New Zealand flag. Similar, James, but they're different, <laughs> they're different. actually. <laughs> just, just quickly saved all our New Zealand <laughs> listeners. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, congrats on moving to London. Um, film, I mean, like from a pop kitchen perspective, we would comment on the sort of media landscape yeah, of like cinemas to go to and cinemas to BFI. go to. BFI is great. Picture House Central is great. Yeah. The, the BFI just re really took over control over the BFI IMAX. Yes. And we've really noticed a difference in their offering yeah. in between the Marvel and the sort of yeah. Nolan IMAX films. There's, there's really, really good stuff like the Alien Double Bill that yeah. we covered and. Um, just seems like they'll, they'll yeah, they put just out Kurosawa the, stuff. The programming and, is so much more interesting. Um, the uh, independent, the, the Prince Charles Cinema in Leicester Square is an independent cinema yeah, that always famous. does old niche movies as well as new ones as well. But like, it's just, it is like the bastion for weird and, yeah. and different films off the beaten track. So that's, yeah. that's a must. As a film person in London, you have to go there. And then just like really solid multiplexes that are very functional yeah. and you can go there. In terms of like film industry from your perspective of production, I don't work in film. I yeah. do do commercial branded content. I will say uh, the TV industry as in like sort of uh, daytime TV mm. is, is in a very bad way. The thing is three quarters of people working in TV currently right now are unemployed and mm. Channel 4 just announced that they're going to be digital only by 2030. So that whole side is really suffering. That's from a multitude of factors over multiple years of everyone becoming incredibly risk averse. They only want to commission shows that are essentially replicatable uh, overseas for an eternity of time. So there's no more like current news shows that are basically irrelevant after a week. Um, so that that's really tricky. But in terms of film, I do hear a lot that London in not just commercial branded content, but in cinema as well, has become a great media yeah. hub. So UK is an exporter of financial services and that's been our largest export for a long time. But media and production has very much been matching that. And London is definitely a hub for media production. There's lots of like different things going on in the space with new media. So definitely exciting, definitely work to go around. Um, we will look out for you Yeah, in London. Liam, good luck, good luck thank with the you move. very much. And this next email is from Jack. Jack who writes in and says, hi, James and George. I've only recently discovered your podcast and I'm very much delighted that I have done. Welcome. Without kissing your backsides too much and causing you to become too big-headed, your podcast is certainly one of the best I've listened to for an awful long time. Welcome. For movie and TV reviews and insights. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Since, You're not funny? No. <laughs> Since not. unearthing your podcast only a week ago, that's a quick conversion wow. from first listen to first writing. Welcome. 
I've listened to 21 episodes between work, in the car, or in the evenings cooking dinner. Nice. Okay. I'm from Ireland, and there's an awful big focus on Irish film, Irish actors, and cinematography, what with the most recent success and praise for Killian Murphy, mm-hmm. Paul Meskell, Andrew Scott, Barry Keoghan, Jesse Buckley, et al. However, my Buckley. questions... Sorry? To love Jesse Buckley. Yes, as we discussed yes. last week. Um, however, my questions arise... Uh, uh, my questions arise... Well, you've put questions arises. You should, it's singular. So questions arise from an English... Then I tripped over something myself. Would you look at something to that? However, my questions arise from an Irish film I rewatched arise. called The Quiet Girl. It is an absolutely gorgeous movie and one that I would encourage you both and indeed anyone else to watch if you are yet to do so. Mm. I'm not a crier, but this movie is one of the very few where I absolutely did sob my eyes I'm not a crier, but, but, I became, but if I was... <laughs> if I was, I did become a little bit blubbery and emotional wreck of a man at the end. The ending is absolutely heart-wrenching, yet nice. beautiful, and would be incredibly uh, suspicious of anyone who isn't stirred emotionally by the mm. ending of this movie overall. Yeah. That movie, again, is called The Quiet Girl, so do check it okay. out. Thank you. My question is, what movies or movie endings bring a tear or several to your eye and why? Keep yeah. up the good work. Look forward to catching up on all remaining episodes I've yet to listen to. Okay. Our boy Killian for the Oscar. Yeah. Well, by the time this episode comes out, he will have already got probably it. So. it yeah. uh, he finishes with, I'm going to have a go at this. and It's uh, Shan Leeds, I want to say. Forgive yeah, my. Or yeah. is that I'll give you that. Or it's slan, slan lead. Slan lead. Slancher. Slancher. <laughs> that's, so sorry. that's when that's cheers, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. I don't know because I'm ignorant. Uh, thank you, Jack, very much. Um, <laughs> movies or movie endings that make you cry. Jack well, uh, recent examples would be All of Us Strangers, oh, Past God. Lives. Whew. Great emotional reaction to uh, And then sort of all time greatest sob, sob fest. Uh, call me track. Marley and me as a dog owner. Oh, yeah. That is. That devastating yeah never that, seen it but i know it every so often that final clip where marley you know <laughs> marley has to get marlied yeah I, i'm ruined i'm yeah. ruined for an hour it's i think that's like, cheating those things about i mean it's not cheating it's it, is, like, it is it's it. cheap it's cheap you know there's um there's that thing that when you have kids you find any media or film or news story about a child getting yeah. abducted or hurt. You're like, oh my God, I just can't hear it. Yeah. I just can't see it. I'm like that with dogs. Yeah, yeah. I just, I, it got my heart and I'll never let it go. Uh, Coco, very sad. Yeah. Uh, normal people was really affecting oh, yeah, me at the end of this. Yeah, episodes. that's true. Yeah, normal people, I would say that. Yeah, uh, Brokeback Mountain. Is what uh, I'd say yeah, Call Me By Your Name, final mm. scene. It, oh, Forrest Gump. I'm going to give it. But you know, when I was younger, yeah, that is yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, and uh, um, It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, yeah. yeah. Happy, happy emotion. But Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3, yeah. And Call Me Cheesy, Titanic Man. Really? Oh. I'm, when... yeah, I'm due a watch of that, really. You, you haven't, you haven't done Not it. Not properly, yeah. no. I'll, I'll go see it in a cinema with you. I need, I'd love to see it on the big screen. Yeah, I've never seen it on the big screen. That's why uh, I want to go. They uh, did the 25th anniversary recently. Well, 25th? Yeah. 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 97. Um... Yeah, I would, I would see Titanic. The Marley are... and Me Man. If you haven't seen it and you've ever interacted yeah, with Everyone knows dog. that film for that one thing. But it's also, it's also good. All right, okay. I stand by Marley and Me. Um, thank you for the emails. Those are all the emails we have today. It was a pleasure hearing from you and we can love to hear you, have you continue to send them in to hello at popkitchenpodcast.com. As always, George, let's end with a game. With a game. Ready? Yeah, Hi. <laughs> <laughs> As always, Pop Kitchen ends with a game. With a game. George, I've got one round of a great game one for us that we game. played before. A singular round of a singular game. You know this game if you listened to our podcast before. This is the name three in six seconds. Oh, God. Super intense quick fire, but questions that are definitely achievable. Yes. But are they achievable in six seconds? You can play along at home. George, are you ready? No. Your time, well, time, the game starts now, are you ready? Yes. Name three films that have won Best Picture. Um, uh, 12 Years a Slave, uh, Spotlight, and Argo. Name three characters in The Matrix. Uh, uh, Trinity, Neo, and Morpheus. Name three MacGuffins. Uh, the Rabbit's Foot. Yes. Um, uh, the, the, uh, the Entity. <laughs> In yeah, the sure, possible. Yeah. What? And um, the brief- Briefcase in Pulp Fiction. Yes. Name three characters that can fly. Superman. Yes. Peter Pan. Yes. And um, uh, bah, 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 uh, Vision. <laughs> yes, that's the three I had. Uh, name three songs from the musical film Grease. Um, Grease is the word, the opening yep. one. Uh, Grease Lightning. Yeah. <laughs> and we go together like Shabba Dabba 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 I'll give it. Name the three lead characters from Jurassic Park. Um, name their characters. Yes. Dr. Alan Grant. Yes. Dr. Ellie Sattler. Yes. And Dr. Ian Malcolm. Yes, well done. Name three shark films, no sequels. Uh, shark Tale. 
Yes. Uh, Deep Blue Sea. Yes. And uh, uh, um, the film. The, the shark film. The shark film. No sequel. Oh, it's Jaws. <laughs> yeah. I think you meant a shark film that has no sequels. No, no, no. no. Oh, so yeah, no Jaws. Jaws. I'm not Jaws 2, 3, 4. Uh, uh, name three Blake Lively films. Um, a Simple Favor. Um, Blake Lively. Uh, the Age of Adeline. Yes. And, um, oh, Blakey, Blakey, Blakey. Uh, last one. Name three films where the characters in the film watch a film. Say that again. Name three films where the characters in the film watch a film. Uh, Notting Hill goes to the cinema, yes. wears the snorkel yes. glasses. Um, it follows, they go to the cinema. They do yep. leave before the film starts. That's all right, That's fine. yeah. And they would also, Taxi Driver, he goes, doesn't he go and he yes. does the... Yeah, 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 very good. Or good. Cape Fear I'd also take as well. You could have done a... That's done, that's the end of the game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> What's the other could, Blake Lively movie? Uh, I was going to say The Shallows, which is also Ooh. a shark film, so you could have doubled up oh, there. Oh, I could have doubled up. Yeah, not yeah. seen it though, so yeah. okay. Um, yeah, uh, Jaws, Deep Blue Sea, Sharknado. Sharknado, yeah. That's, that's why I said no sequels, because <laughs> you could do, you could do five taste. of those. I, mean, um, I, I, do you know I, 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 even though I made it harder for myself by thinking yeah, that I, they couldn't have sequels, yeah. I still did it. Shark it Tale. Name three shark films. No sequels. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, the the Mission Impossible series is always great to go for MacGuffin. Yeah, we well, also the, list, the, the rabbit's knock foot. List. Yes, the rabbit's foot. Uh, the One Ring. You could have got not. not oh, Mission Impossible. that's that's, that's a thing. good MacGuffin. Ark of the Covenant. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I just always uh, think the, of Holy Grail films. for Indiana Jones and technically Dial of Destiny. And technically, um, yes. Dial. Yeah. No, isn't that's not the dial destiny? Isn't the dial destiny Archimedes' is dial? It's still there. He still he still hand he still runs about with it. Yeah, but he doesn't drive the covenant, does he? It drives character. Does it? Uh, a MacGuffin. No, but does the Ark of the Covenant drive Dial of the Destiny? That's what you said. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I see. You were debating if it was a MacGuffin. I'm like, of course it is. You've, you've melted my brain. Yeah. But I actually passed that, I think, pretty well. I wrote down the same three characters that can fly. I said Peter Pan, Superman, and Vision. Isn't that wow. weird? Wow. Well, can you give me another one then? Um, can fly organically. Organic flight. So Dr. Well, Iron Hatton. Man doesn't count. No. Because he's, no, he's, like, yeah, he's born a, with the ability to fly. has the ability to fly. A Dr. Manhattan from Watchmen. He can fly. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, sort of Wanda from WandaVision. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. Go down the superhero route. Magneto. Now, uh, now, do you count Magneto as a flyer? No, because he pushes just, the earth away from himself. No, he, he uses his metallicalises, whatever it is, mm. to enhance him. In the same way, would you count Thor? Because Thor uses he actually his hammer. Throws, you know who you could count? The, the guys in the film Chronicle. God, yeah, you they, could. They fly. Yes. That film. And Nathan Petrelli in season one of Heroes. Yes. Well done, George. Yeah, it's actually not that many who are naturally natural flyers. It's a very Superman thing. As God intended. <laughs> Real flyers. I'm Green think... Lantern? Sure, but then I'll be counting the ring. Is, is, mm. is, is, is he like sim? imagining the flight ability? I, I'm not uh, that clued up on my Green Lantern. No, shocker. I'm surprised they haven't rebooted that. Yes. It's actually Why one that I feel like would be ripe for reboot. Maybe they just don't know how to, to, to they're like if we don't know if we don't know how to make it with a sledgehammer and do a stupid blockbuster version yeah. of it. Yeah. Anyway, thank you, James, for that. Yeah. Well, Jurassic Park's coming back. I, I, just, I was very back. impressed how quickly I got on those. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think you did well. Yeah. I thought it was like it's a well known film that yeah, we characters. saw recently. Yes. So earlier, within yeah. a year. Within yeah. a year. I and think half. I've only seen Jurassic Park and maybe I think I saw Jurassic Park three at the cinema. Oh no, Same. Jurassic World. I've seen Jurassic World one. Same. Alan. Alan. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there you go, guys. Thank you so much for Thank spending you. your time with us. If you've made it to this part of, your, uh, of the episode, you're clearly our biggest fans who enjoy us the most. So thank you thank so you. much for sticking around. Uh, don't forget, we post new episodes of this podcast every, every single, single Wednesday. And please continue to follow us and engage with us on social media. We're posting more film bites, more things we've interviewed with people and spoken with people out on the street. And uh, continue to like, subscribe, subscribe share, comment, uh, send, it, send it to your friends helps us very much so we're growing on, on on social platforms and we really appreciate it and welcome to all new listeners as well we have um missed the oscars by product of us uh recording early but yes. we will do a little catch up when we find out who won the what and yes. we'll go over I mean, it and react to it if there's any big surprises well we, we'll, we, see. well, we'll see well people are probably listening to this do you remember in like, the oscars when that person did that thing yeah like, oh, wow yeah yeah so uh but yes we'll be back in due course with an, with another 
film review. I hope. So. Why am I saying it like I don't know what's happening? We do sometimes, this every week. Sometimes when you talk about the future episodes, it sounds like you're never coming back. Yeah, we'll be back. Yeah, um, sure. Next week, uh, I guess. For we'll be here. A film. Uh, <laughs> it's like you've you've been con- your contract is over, but you're not allowed to declare it. <laughs> and we'll be packing up my things. doing more films yep. like yep. we always have. And uh, yeah, that'll be great. Thank you much, uh, Mike. Thank you. That'll be great. And then let me my Uber is here. <laughs> Bye guys. Have a great week. Bye bye.